Welcome back to Wellness Wave. Thanks for tuning in this morning to ride the wave with us. Each week our goal is to give you at least one suggestion that will make your life a little bit better. Everything on this show is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. My name is Phil George. I'm a clinical biochemist, a certified personal trainer, and a health coach. We're going to do something really different today. I do a lot of seminars and I put together pretty much a slideshow you know, for everything you can imagine, cholesterol, Alzheimer's, um, diabetes. And uh, one of the things I try to do, and some people tell me that one, thing that they, one of the few things they like about me is I make very complicated um, you know, issues understandable. And biochemistry is a complicated, obviously a complicated field. I'm a biochemist. But it doesn't do any good if I know the stuff, but I can't, I can't transfer the information over to you. So I've come up with a bunch of slides that I think um, I've been told really help people understand, again, complex uh, subjects to make it a lot more understandable for the, for the lay person. So this, I'm going to go over a bunch of slides that one of this, uh, this is one of the presentations I gave to a group uh, actually back in, in 22. And I kind of take these slides and I, uh, you know, and I reconfigure them. Um, actually, sat down. In fact, Art and I talked yesterday. I sat down with a, uh, with a, um, a some a Wendy, uh, a friend of mine, and she was worried about her cholesterol. And actually, I went this over this. Sat down with her at New Kitchen. Went over all of these slides with her, and she said it really helped her. So why don't we get started with the slides? And uh, Art, you're ready to put the. Oh, we go. So this is the beginning of the seminar. Again, I can do this for any group. So if you want me to come out and do a seminar for your group, hopefully I'll be doing these for the, uh, for the Lester Senior Center pretty soon. And so this is just the beginning. Again, it's, it's about cholesterol. And okay, had a, I have to give a health disclaimer, informational purposes only, so we kind of already did that. And uh, there's an interesting book uh, called The Great uh, Cholesterol Con. And this goes into the whole thing. A lot of the stuff you've been talked about cholesterol is really, is really not accurate. Let's do the next slide. Okay, one of the things, uh, again, people are so obsessed with cholesterol and they think they want to get the things lower and lower and lower. One of the problems is we really, really need cholesterol. So why don't we go back to that slide again, Art? This is this is a very, a very famous, um, a very famous uh, study in terms of how they look at things. For most things, something that's too low is not good, and something that's too high is not good, and that's the case with cholesterol. This is called the bathtub sh shape analysis. They found that people with a lower, a lower uh, amount of cholesterol actually have what they call a higher, a higher all-cause mortality rate, and they die for any reason. People with a very high cholesterol, again, they, they die, again, for, for whatever reasons. There's a very, very large range. Uh, let's, I'm just picking numbers here. This is inaccurate. Let's, let's say it's 100 for, for the low range. Below 100, you're in trouble. And that other range, I think, is about four to 500. Now, most people will tell you 300 cholesterol is really, really high. But you have a very large sweet, sweet spot here that you can, you can go through. That you can, you can go through. Uh, so when I go to the next, the next slide, I'll be on that. If you have no cholesterol, you're dead, basically. Cholesterol is so, so important. The, the, the bulk of, the, of your brain is made up of, of cholesterol. So if somebody calls you a fathead, say, thank you very much. You need that for hormones, you need it for testosterone, estrogen, you need it. Your cells are made up of a large part of cholesterol. So unless you have cholesterol, you're, you're dead, That's, you're in big trouble. The other thing we mentioned on the last show with Art is that uh, if you don't take cholesterol in, you make it what's called endogenously from the inside, exogenously is from the outside. Other thing interesting, you know, there was a big thing a while ago that, you know, eggs, you know, eggs are awful for you, you have a lot of cholesterol. What people don't realize, the cholesterol you take in exogenously from the outside, you really can't, you really can't absorb, you can't take it in. It's too big, it's, it's too big of a molecule, your body can't deal with it, it comes out in your poop, okay? So you're just going to get rid of it anyway. So most of your cholesterol uh, is really made up uh, from your liver, uh, again, endogenously. So next slide, Art. We're gonna get into a, a little bit of advanced biochemistry here, so don't, don't be afraid. Okay, next slide. These are just concepts, okay? You don't have to memorize this stuff, and the whole point of these slides is, is to give you a, a, an understanding of how it works. 
Okay, next slide, Art. Okay, this is a little bit of complicated, a little bit of the complicated biochemistry. Okay, inside your cell, you have a, a lining. It's called your endothelial cells. It's a, it's a lining in, in, inside of all of your arteries and all, and all of your veins, all your blood vessels. It's, an, it's, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's, it's based in the lining. Inside that lining is something called the endothelial glycocalyx. Again, big word. Again, you just base, these are just concepts. So if you can imagine a cast iron frying pan, and if you ever cook on a frying pan uh, and you don't have Teflon on there or some kind of smoothing agent and you cook it, you know it gets stuck. Very, very hard to get off. So what happens with the, with the glycocalyx endothelial, what happens with that is it's kind of like a Teflon covering that pan. So what happens is, I'm going to get this in the next slide, when you, when you have something called a, a lipoprotein, and that's the one that actually you know, that transports this, it goes, in, inside, in, it goes in, in, inside of your arteries and it goes to different parts of your body because basically your arteries are a transport system, just like pipes in your house. They transport water. Your endothelial, your basically your your blood vessels transport things. So the other thing they transport is 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 cholesterol, LDL, HDL. You probably heard good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, which is totally a mis a total misnomer. So the endothelial coats it, so it doesn't stick like a frying pan. It, it doesn't it does not stick to it. So that's what your endothelial does. It does not stick to it. So that's the reason why you want you want a nice a nice uh, homogeneous, uh, you know, uh, glycocalyx, so things don't get stuck to it. Okay, next slide, Art. So what happens, you've probably heard of the, of, the, uh, of the HDL as being the good cholesterol. So what HDL does, if you have any kind of plaque inside your arteries, what the, what the HDL does, it goes, it goes inside, it goes inside of, of, the, of the arteries and it takes, it takes the plaque out and brings it back to the liver and it recycles it, it recycles it to, uh, you know, uh, and back into cholesterol. So that's why they call it the, uh, the good cholesterol because what it does is it kind of keeps every, everything, uh, everything what they call homogeneous, keeps everything, everything going, going correctly. Uh, and again, the next, I'll get into it eventually in the next few slides, but the other thing is uh, it's the HDL is not cholesterol, it's something called the lipoprotein. So can we have the next slide, Art? Uh, Kind of getting ahead of myself, but you know they're talking about cholesterol. You know, uh, you have a high cholesterol, you're gonna, you're going to basically, you're gonna, you know, have a heart attack. There's a very famous expression in studies, and it's called correlation does not prove causation. Good example: if I was a uh, an alien from outer space and I was looking down on Earth and I would see uh, all these car accidents, okay, and I say, well, what's 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 the correlation between car accidents? Well, every time I see car accidents, I see these, these ambulances go in. I'd say, well, if we just eliminate the ambulances, we won't have any more car accidents. See where I'm going with this? So because the two are correlated, it doesn't mean one causes the other one. Another slide, Art. This is an issue I can't see it from here. This is another interesting one that the amount of money that they, that they spend on, on, on space exploration directly correlates with uh, suicides by hanging. Obviously, those two are not correlated, but... You can make a correlation to almost anything. Next slide, Art. Next slide, okay. A divorce rate in Maine, okay. Per capita consumption of margarine. So the, it, it, this says the more margarine you consume in the state of Maine, the more divorces you're going to have. Obviously, that's not the case. This is another case of, uh, of, of, of uh, correlation does not prove causation. So because they see high cholesterols in some people doesn't mean that cholesterol is causing the problem but unfortunately a lot of people simplify this as you know th th these two are connected they're not connected there is some correlation but it, it, it's a very small correlation okay next slide art okay we talked a little bit about remember uh cholesterol C cholesterol is a fat so the way to think about this if you have a if you had a big bowl of water and you put olive oil in it, you know what's going to happen. The, oil, the, 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 the olive oil is not, is, is not going to, is not going to it dissolve. It's not going to dissolve into the water. It's going to float on the top of it. That's, that's what they call lipophobic. In other words, it does not like the water. Uh, lipophilic means it likes the water. So if you put, if you put uh, sugar 
or uh, if you put sugar in your coffee, it dissolves. So that, that, that's basically uh, lipophilic. It likes, it likes going into it. Because what happens when your liver makes the cholesterol, the cholesterol cannot, cannot go directly into the, in, into the blood because it'll just float on top. It can't go. So that's what you have, something called the lipoprotein. Uh, so what happens with a lipoprotein, there's a little bit of, of lipid in there, but the protein kind of goes on top of it. And protein is, is, lip, is lipophilic. It likes, it likes, it gets dissolved in water. So it kind of, it kind of acts like a boat. Let's say we have the next slide, Art. This is, this, this is what's called a lipoprotein. You see that, that nice uh, yellow thing out there? That's all protein. It's on the outside. Inside of that is all of your cholesterol, your HDL, your LDL, vitamin E, all of your, all of your fat-soluble vitamins. If you ever see sometimes, if you want to take vitamin D or vitamin E, it'll say take it with the meal because it's fat, it's fat soluble. So what that means basically, uh, you know, it, 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 it's basically, it, it works a lot better because it can take it and put it and put it where it needs to go. So what you saw before, again, that, that's what's called a lipoprotein. Uh, so you got something there. Okay, next slide, Art. So again, a cutesy picture here. So uh, this little blue thing in the middle, that, 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 that's your lipoprotein. And you can see it says all on board. We've got the cholesterol, we've got the HDL. The bottom of the screen, you're seeing all of the fat, all of the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin E, omega-3s, all that stuff goes in there because it, it can't transport, it can't, cannot transport through the blood unless it's in a carrier. The way to think about it, it's like a boat. Okay, so these lipoproteins are a boat that hold cholesterol, HDL, all fat things because it cannot dissolve inside, in, in, inside your blood. So you need a transport mechanism, and that's exactly, and that's exactly what, the, uh, what the lipoprotein does. Okay, next slide, Art. <laughs> next slide, Art. So again, we're seeing here, remember the HDL, uh, they call it the good cholesterol. Again, remember, it's not cholesterol, it's a lipoprotein. And the, uh, and the LDL, uh, which they call the bad. So we talked before, so what the HDL does, it kind of takes any kind of, any kind of plaque you have in your arteries, takes it out, sends it back to the liver, it gets recycled. The LDL does, uh, some of the LDL, we'll get to that in a second, there's two, there's, there's more than two types, but to, to simplify, there's two, there, there's two types of LDL. One of them is, is uh, you call it a good, good LDL, and one of, them, one of them is a bad LDL. So, Art, next slide. So, it depends on the size of it. So, in other words, you see over here, it says LDL. These are, these are large LDL particles. We have medium-sized LDL particles, and we have small LDL. You see at the far right, it says really bad cholesterol. The way to think about it is this. The LDL, and these are like big, big fluffy LDLs. They're nice and fluffy and they float around. So when the LDL goes in, into your blood cells, and it, it, let's go of its cargo, whatever the cargo is, it's fluffy, it doesn't get stuck. I mean, it, does, it doesn't get stuck in, in, inside, of the, inside of the endothelial cells. And it goes, goes away. But the little ones, they're kind of like BBs. They go in there and they damage. Remember the glycocalyx, the Teflon coating, it damages it. And that's what happens. You start damaging your blood, your, the endothelial cells because you have no more glycocalyx to protect it because it's been damaged. And, it's, it, and that LDL, LDL particles stick to it. You start forming plaque and calcification. Uh, the analogy we made uh, last time with art was just like, you know, you're, you're at home. You, you, you turn on your, 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 your faucet and everything's fine, but as the days go on, uh, you get less and less water because you get calcification. Uh, the water doesn't stop instantly, just like if you'll get calcification in your artery, arteries, that, that, that doesn't stop instantly, but slowly you get calcification and your carotid arteries get smaller, 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 and you wind up with a stroke and, and nasty things like that. So next slide, Art. Now, two people can have the same amount of LDL. That's why looking at your LDL alone is a meaningless number because, again, there's two types of LDL. There's LDL-A, which is you know, good, the, the good LDL, and LDL-B, which is the bad. The LDL-B is the small ones. So two people can have identical amounts of LDL, and I think the number's around 100. Let's say the, the 125, I think, is the cutoff point what they're talking about. 
So, so uh, I could have uh, uh, an LDL of 125. You could have a, an LDL of 125. We have entirely different risk of heart attack or arterial sclerosis. Entirely different risk because it depends on the size. Remember the little BBs that damage that, that damage endothelial as opposed to the big fluffy ones. Okay, next slide, Art. There we go. Okay, cutesy picture. Big fluffy LDL. See how happy that <laughs> how happy that LDL particle is. It's nice and fluffy. It's benign. Causes no problems. The pattern B, the little one, that's high risk. So again, we could have the same identical LDL numbers, but have in two entirely different risks risks of, of heart disease. Okay, Art. Next one. So the real story again is the HDL and the LDL. So there's a ratio here. So if you have a really high, uh, a really high HDL and you also have uh, even like a relatively high LDL, that HDL in a lot of ways will offset the LDL, even if it's the bad LDL, okay? Okay, next slide, Art. Okay, and again, this, this shows basically, again, in, in terms of, uh, in terms of, there's another big step here. It's, it's basically they call insulin resistance or people with, you know, that have type 2 diabetes. That causes a lot of inflammation. It causes a lot of inflammation inside the blood vessels. So then that's going to make it, you make your blood, blood vessels more susceptible to problems. So that's the reason why you want to go with a relatively low carb diet. Don't eat a lot of sugars and stuff like that because it causes beyond just this. There's a process called glycation, and what glycation is, the analogy I like to make is this. You know when you have a piece of bacon, it's nice and floppy, and you put it in the frying pan. If you heat it up a lot, or a chicken breast, right? The chicken breast in the beginning, it's, you, know, you, can, you can move it around, no problem. But if you cook it, and you cook it a lot, it becomes very, very hard. That's called glycation. So what happens is the sugar molecule messes up the protein. The same thing happens in your body. So if you're taking in a lot of sugar and you, you're insulin resistant, you, you, it, it, the, actually the medical term is called AGE, advanced glycation end products. So what happens is the sugar gets, gums up all of your protein in your, in your blood vessels, in, in everything. It messes up pretty much everything. That's why you wanna be on a relatively low carb diet as much as possible. Okay, Art, next slide. Again, this I think is the best slide of all. It shows, it shows these people with identical LDL uh, uh, particle num numbers and cholesterol. And you see on the far left, we've got Jerry. Uh, Jerry's got those big, fluffy, happy, the happy LDL particles, the LDLA. And the particles, they change in size. There's some, there's some large LDLs, there's some medium LDLs, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The tiny, tiny ones, like the little BBs that, get, they, that, mess, that mess, up, mess up your endothelial cells, those are the ones that are really dangerous. So even though all four of these people have identical LDLs, you can see uh, Maria at the end has got the highest risk because she's got the smallest little LDL particles, okay? Okay, Art, right, next slide. Again, if the Apo B, that's, that's the bad one. That's going to mess up your heart. Okay, our right, next one. So again, the LDL, why it's so dangerous, it causes like oxidation. And you know, I know Art, Art does a lot with cars. So you can imagine what happens if your car gets exposed to a lot of moisture and a lot of oxygen, oxidation, it causes rust. The same exact thing happens, the same exact thing happens with your, uh, with your body. It oxidizes, it messes up, it messes up all of the different, you know, all the, all the different types of, um, you know, of, of your blood vessels and everything else. Okay, next, next one, Art. So we talked before, this, this is why, this is, this is, this is your artery, you see at the bottom there, and you see that little yellow stuff, there, there, there's, there's your plaque. So that's why you love that, that's why you love. So the, the LDL is putting a little plaque in there, and the, this, this, let's say, is the bad LDL, and the HDL goes in there, you know, like a little Pac-Man, munches it up and takes it up and recycles it. That's why you want eight high HDLs. One of the things uh, the drug companies are working on really, really hard right now is they're trying to come up with some kind of a drug that will raise your HDL. That, that would be like a zillion dollar drug because HDL does so many, so many good things. And with the, again, with the HDL, 
Uh, it's taking stuff out of there. They haven't found a drug to do it. If they ever do again, that would be huge because uh, statins cause problems on their own. I'll get into statins later on. They cause problems on their own. So the best thing you want to do is uh, get your HDL, get your HDL as, as high as you can because that's going to do, uh, undo a lot of damage. The other takeaway from this is also what you want to do is you want a low, low carb diet, you know, low carb diet, don't eat too many carbs, uh, obviously processed sugar, processed food, ultra processed foods, you don't want that. Okay, Art, next one. Uh, I talked about statins. This is from JAMA, Journal, Journal, uh, Journal of the American Medical Association. This is one of the top journals in the world. And this is a me saying it. This is them. Oh, you have only a 0.8% reduction in all cause mortality, dying for any reason if you take statins. So statins, statins don't really, don't really do a heck of a lot, but they, they can cause a lot of problems. The studies too, uh, out of various publications like JAMA, two of the things, uh, two of the problems uh, that are caused with that is one thing is what happens with statins going to get a little bit, again, into biochemistry here. So uh, everybody knows, you know, the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, everybody knows that, but they don't know what happens with the powerhouse of the cell. What happens is you have something called the electron transport chain, and it has basically uh, five complexes. And the first complex is, uh, is, is where everything gets started. Again, the analogy I like to make, uh, the big thing that Henry Ford actually contributed uh, to, uh, to the Industrial Revolution was not necessarily the Model T. It, 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 was, it was basically just the assembly line. So if you can imagine, um, you want to have a car. You start off with the car, uh, you know, there's just the frame. You're going to put four wheels on, you're going to put a windshield on, you're gonna, and it goes from point to point to point. So unless you have all of those parts, you know, all, of those, all of those precursors, you know, like wheels and stuff to put into it, the car is not going to be done at the end. It works the same way. The end, the end result of the electron transport chain is called ATP, which, which is basically your energy molecule. Without ATP, you'd be dead in a second. Energy for your heart, your brain, every part of your body needs ATP, and that's made up by your mitochondria, the electron transport chain. That's why they call it the powerhouse of the cell because it's, it's, so, it's so important. What happens in the first complex, complex one, uh, something goes in, you've probably heard of CoQ10 or ubiquinol. So CoQ10 is, is, is basically is a supplement you can take. Uh, the best form of it is ubiquinol because it's, it's the most bioavailable. So what a statin does, it decreases the amount of ubiquinol or CoQ10 inside of that first complex, which it sets the whole thing off. You make a lot less ATP. That's why if, you, if, you're, taking, if you're taking statins, a lot of times a doctor will have to put you on several different types of statins because you come back and say, you know, my muscles ache, I got no energy. You're not making enough ATP because the first complex, it's messing up the CoQ10 or the ubiquinol. If you're still taking, and I, this is a medical advice, but if you're still taking statins, just, uh, uh, just uh, email me, philgeorgiacharta.net. You want to take, you want to take, uh, you want to, you want to be taking uh, the CoQ10. It'll offset, it'll, it'll, you'll, put, you'll put more in because that statin is taking some of it out. The second thing they found with the statin is increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Again, because it's messing up your electron transport chain. The third thing is there's also an increased risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. So there are some significant side effects to statins. Okay, they may, they, and again, if they're seeing that your LDL is 125 or whatever it is, you may not, I'm going to get into Wendy in a second. In fact, I covered Wendy on, on last week's show. She was freaking out because she, she thought she would have to go on a statin. She went, didn't want to go on a statin. Turned out that her, her lipids were perfect. I'll get into that later on. I think they did on last show. I, ran, I looked over all of her lipids. Lipids were perfect, even though her LDL was a little bit elevated. I mean, LDL, her cholesterol was a little bit elevated. But her HDL was fantastic. Remember, HDL, the good one, takes, takes the crap out of the, out of the arteries and puts, it, and puts it back into the liver. Okay, Art, next one. Again, another, another study, uh, new analysis shows that statins have, uh, have a minimal uh, benefit. So again, it, it, because again, the problem is not the cholesterol. The problem is not the LDL. The problem is the type of LDL. Okay, next one, Art. 
okay, the best thing is, again, we talked a little bit about it, what you want to do, a, a diet is a, it really is, is the, the, the best prevention and treatment for a, a myocardial in, infarctions. Uh, again, there's a whole study over here, the lipoprotein levels uh, based on the carbohydrates. The more carbohydrates you take, the more, you know, remember that advanced glycation end products, glycation, it's messing up, and that's, and, that's causing, and that's causing those big fluffy LDLs to get into the little, little LDLs. So that's why, uh, in addition, you don't want diabetes, you don't want these problems. So diet is so, so important. It's going to help you with so many different things. Okay, next one, Art. Uh, okay, Goffman identifies dietary carbohydrates as a potential cause of a, a coronary uh, arterial sclerosis. Again, you can read that over there. It talks about the carbohydrates are a are, are big, big a part of people coming down, coming down with, uh, with, with cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes. I talk a lot about my, uh, my, my three pillars of health. Number one, diet. Number two, exercise, because exercise is going to get all that glucose out of your body. And number three, a community. It's good to be, obviously, around other people. Okay, next one, Art. Uh, okay, then the, okay, interesting, because um, one of the, um, one of the, when, I, when I was doing, doing seminars for, for the vets, one of the executive directors there said he was scared to death because he, he had a lot of strokes in his family. And what I told him was, if you're, worried, if you're worried about this, in fact, I mentioned this to Wendy because she was worried about it to a lot of her family. One of, the, one of the gold standard tests to do is something called the calcium artery score. So you have your carotid arteries right here. So obviously that's going, going from your heart to your brain, going back and forth. Those are pipes that need to be, need to be opened up. If you remember going back, my analogy about water in your pipes, how they slowly, you know, get less and less, less and less water go through, it works the same way. It works exactly the same way uh, with your arteries. You may not have any clue that you're, that you're occluding your, your arteries with calcification until you have a stroke or you have a heart attack. In fact, I just read an interesting study it's from a few years ago. And a lot of people say, well, what, what's, the, what's the number one indicator of a heart attack? A lot of people will say, you know, the typical ones are you know, chest pain, you know, uh, pain to the left arm because you're, 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 the bulk of your heart is on the left side. And then you go through the other thing, dizziness and this, this, and this. In actuality, 40 to 50 percent, the first sign of a heart attack is death. It kills you. It's an instant death. So sometimes you don't even have a warning. So you don't know how much occlusion you have, you have in, in, in your arteries. Uh, there's no way of knowing, okay? You may get uh, a little short of breath, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little of that. It means you're not getting enough oxygen because obviously your blood vessels carry oxygen, uh, you know, throughout your body, gets rid of the carbon dioxide. So you're not, maybe you're not breathing. Maybe, maybe, you're, not, you, maybe you're not breathing correctly. <laughs> Two minutes ago, Art. <laughs> I'm to wrap up. So um, you're not breathing correctly. But again, so what I mentioned, I mentioned to this executive director and I mentioned to Wendy is one of the things uh, you, want to, you want to look out for is something called the calcium artery score. They put you basically in, in, into this machine and they can see how much calcification you have in your carotids. Uh, and, and what happens, I mentioned this to this, to, to this gentleman and it was funny what his doctor said. He said, well, you don't have any symptoms right now, so we're not going to do a calcium artery score until you have symptoms. I said, why would you wait until you're half occluded before you have it done? So my mantra is you want to prevent the problem before it happens. You don't want to wait for the problem to happen. So that's one of the reasons. If you don't want to go through that, the next time you have a, uh, you have a physical have your doctor with a stethoscope. He listens to your heart. Have them listen, listen to listen, listen to carotid arteries. They can hear that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh coming in and out. At least they give you a little bit of a sense. So you want to know what's going on, what's going on, what's going on with your with with your arteries. Okay, Art. Next slide. Maybe. Okay. This. Okay. It shows obviously uh, the the worst of calcium artery score you can see. In the far right, this, in the green, he's got just about a no, he's got, he's, oh, he's, he's totally, he's totally opened up. And, and to the left, uh, basically, uh, you know, obviously a big, big problem. So we're coming up at the end of the show. If you have any questions, email me, philgeorgeacharter.net. 
we just got a, uh, actually we just got a, uh, a, a brand new uh, YouTube video, so all the stuff's gonna go on in YouTube. Can you do me a favor, uh, go to YouTube and, and just type in Wellness Wave Radio. You'll see all of these shows. If you can do me a favor, just like and subscribe and maybe put a comment down there. It'll really help the algorithm. It'll help, you know, help, you know, get the information out to the people. Or email me, philgeorgiacharter.net, if you want me to do a seminar, you know, to your particular group. And uh, that's it. And we'll be back next week. Thanks for tuning in.